Everybody should do in their lifetime sometime two things. One is to consider death, to observe skulls and skeletons, and to wonder what it will be like to go to sleep and never wake up. Never. That uh, is the most, is a very gloomy uh, thing for contemplation, but it's like manure. Just as manure fertilizes the plants and so on, so the contemplation of death and the acceptance of death is very highly generative of creative life. You get wonderful things out of that. And the other thing to contemplate is to follow the possibility of the idea that you are totally selfish. That you don't have a good thing to be said for you at all. You are a complete, utter rascal. <laughs> Now, when you go deeply into the nature of selfishness, what do you discover? You say, I love myself, I seek my own advantage. Now, what is the self that I love? What do I want? And that becomes an increasingly ever-deepening puzzle. Now, I've often referred to this when you say to somebody else, I love you. It's always rather disconcerting to the person to whom you say that. If you imply that you love them with a pure, disinterested and holy love, they automatically suspect it as being a little bit phony. But if you say, I love you so much I could eat you, that's an expression, as a way of saying to a person, you attract me so much that I can't help it. I'm absolutely bowled over by you, I'm gone. And people like that. Then they feel they're really being loved, that it's absolutely genuine. But now, I love you so much I could eat you. Now what the devil do I want? I certainly don't want to eat the girl in the sense of literally devouring her, because then she'd disappear. <laughs> ah, but I love myself. And what is me? How do, in what way do I know me? When it suddenly occurs to me that I know me only in terms of you. And that the main task of the psychotherapist is to do what he called to integrate the evil. To, as it were, put the devil in us in its proper function. Because you see, it's always the devil, the unacknowledged one, the outcast, the scapegoat, the bastard, the bad guy, you see, the black sheep of the family. It's always from that point that generation comes. In other words, uh, in the same way as in the drama, uh, to have the play, it's necessary to introduce a villain. It's necessary to introduce a certain element of trouble. 